Today's episode is brought to you by Wedding Post House and Bridegroom.video. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the How to Film Weddings podcast. My name is John Bunn. I'm joined today by Nick Miller. It's a good yep. day. It's a new week. It's like summer is almost here. Kids are out. Life is good. Nick, happy Monday to you. Say hello. Tell me hello. one great tell me one great thing that's happening in your world. Wow, one great thing that is happening in my mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is for I the last couple of days I have really been doing a lot of research on um, savings and retirement and investing and like that kind of stuff yeah and so I just opened because I, di I didn't know what to do for now but I just opened a high yield savings account to get me like four and a half percent a year I know that that's that's really exciting and I can see it on your face like that's ridiculous or I'm something. just wondering but how many of the listeners are still here after that like did they leave they're like oh my gosh this is so boring like I fell asleep already. I got I to gotta turn on another podcast. There's anything's better than this. Um, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I'm but just kidding. That's, like, that's super 40-plus-year-old dad of you. <clears throat> hey, you know, um, I, I do what I do. And uh, that, that was one thing that I've wanted to do, and I just haven't done it. And I signed up, Good and job. I did it. Transferred money in there. So I'm starting to get those low, high-yield percentages on my that is great whatever. news speaking of high percentage low percentage yield nick i just have to i have to say that i have zero segue from that into the episode i have no idea how to get from that to talking about our friends um over uh, you know no we don't have to talk about friends do we no we don't we oh, don't have man. to no all right so I guess I should probably mention that we have our 10 Instagram prompts before we get into our episode. That's what we should do. 10 Instagram prompts. We go to howtofilmweddings.com slash Instagram. We're in the middle of this series. Instagram is the best. And if you want 10 prompts, 10 hooks, 10 content hook type ideas, they're free. They're over there for you. So Nick, before we get into anything else, is there anything else that I'm messing up or are we, are we good to get into this episode talking today about going from Instagram to inbox? What the heck does that mean? Help me. I need a lifeboat. Be before before we get started, I you are a person that whenever I talk about anything like financial related, like usually your ears perk up and you get kind of excited and you're like, ooh, this is... This. But I think... I discovered just now that in this context of our podcast, when I talk about something that's exciting to me, getting a new savings account is probably equivalent with me talking about baseball on the podcast in your eyes. It's yeah, it's a little worse. It's one yeah. worse. Well, yeah. But yeah, okay. no, okay. no, that, okay. I think, it, I think people, if you're out there and you don't have a savings account, especially a high yield savings, you might check, check one out. Nick, you got any recommendations? I, I signed up with SoFi. Is, okay. is who I signed up with today. Um, okay. What is your account number? Just if just the last four of it. Just kidding. Four. Um, that four. is your early. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> for real though, Nick, we've been talking for a lot real. about Instagram. And if yeah. you want a high yield interest on your Instagram today, mm. Mm. today is the day. See what I did there? Oh, uh, I did. We're in episode four of this series. And as we were talking about in the first three episodes, I, I threw this idea to Nick of like the goal, you know, what is the goal of our wedding film Instagram account? Not our personal one, if you have one that's separate, but if you're a wedding filmmaker in 2024 on Instagram, what is your goal? Is it to be famous? Is it to look cool to other wedding filmmakers? Because I know for me, my goal, my main goal is to book new clients and make more money. Like that's my ultimate goal. And if we know that that's the North star of where we're heading, that helps us make decisions. My goal isn't to look cool 
to other wedding filmmakers on my wedding film account. It is on how to film weddings. I want I want you guys to like that account and follow that account. And I'm happy, happy if you want to follow my John Bunn Films account. That's fine. But the point that I'm getting at is I think a lot of us just get on Instagram, have our account, and don't really know where we are aiming. Nick? Yeah, I uh, I think to follow that up, I think most people that you would talk to that are listening to this would say, yes, my goal is to uh, get more clients and I want to get people booking and I want to make money. I, I, I think that many of us will say that, but I think a little bit of every, maybe not everyone, but a lot of people's issue with that is that they actually want to be famous and they want to look cool to other people. And, and so there is this underlying thing there. And uh, I think that this is going to be a mindset shift for a lot of people is to say, okay, what is the purpose of my account? Um, it, it should be to get clients and make money. Like, why do you have a business? It's not so that other people can think you look cool. And if that is, then you're like, how financially, how are you doing? You know, how, are you supporting yourself? You know, what are what's going on with there. And so um, hopefully we can uh, change how we're thinking a little bit about Instagram and just remind ourselves the goal of all this stuff that we're doing, why we've been talking about Instagram. is not just to grow your account and get big numbers. It is so that people will come to you and people will hire you. So uh, what, what we wanted to do today is spend a little bit of our time and we're going to talk about uh, the five steps to take to get your leads on Instagram to your inbox. We're going Instagram to inbox today. And so we want to uh, talk about ways that you can get people to discover you on Instagram, but then reach out to you. So the first thing that we're going to talk about here, did you have something you wanted to say? Nope. I'm okay. great. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, I thought you were, you know, I just thought you were, you were handing me the oh, baton. Oh, you thought so I, was I was handing it ready. off to you? I was just ready. Okay. I'm always ready. You know what, John? I'll let you take the first one. Since Perfect. you're ready. Okay. Okay. Now that we've done that, Rocky, Rocky start. We, we're good though. We don't edit these things out. We're in a great mood. Uh, okay. So as Nick is talking about going from Instagram to inbox, we now know that most of us should be having the goal of getting people from Instagram to booking us. And the first step to getting people from Instagram into your inbox would be create some type of of lead magnet, something that is going to compel your leads toward your brand and taking the next step. So that might be different for you and your your business, but it, it could easily, you know, who, who are the leads that you want to get to your inbox? To me, it's potential couples and it's planners, photographers, people like I want to make relationships. So what can I do to lead them closer to reaching out to me, connecting with me. So um, maybe offering something of value that the person can't refuse in exchange for them taking the next step. Uh, it could be um, a blog that you want them to check out. It could be um, a freebie, a downloadable PDF. It could just be a lot of different things depending on what you're, you're wanting to do. But we have to create some type of a lead magnet. And I've been doing this on my Instagram towards couples by basically making a post or something and saying, um, you know, it's like most people get the most fr like the most frustrating thing on a wedding day, comment below or the thing that gets you behind the most on your wedding day, comment the word timeline below and I'll give you my free timeline to build for your wedding day or some, some kind of like helpful thing that's taking my top of funnel people that we've been talking about and getting them to take a next step with me. Not everybody's going to do that, but a lot of people that are like, ooh, I need that information. I need that, lo that loop closed in my brain of what is going to get people behind on their timeline. I'm planning a wedding. I am a bride. I'm trying to figure out my timeline. I want to download that thing from John. And so like the first thing is lead magnets. Nick, what do you have to say about lead magnets when it comes to getting people closer to your brand or feel free to move on to point number two? Yeah, uh, I, I think when it comes to lead magnets, um, a lot of us aren't, maybe a lot of us have difficulty thinking about uh, what those would look like and what those are. And so I would just kind of sit down and make a list. Where are you seeing your couples struggle? What are 
questions that people are continuing to ask? What what are things that you know would be really, really helpful to people that are engaged that are looking potentially for a wedding videographer or a certain vendor or something like that? And start thinking through content, whether it's blogs, whether it's downloads, whether it's something in in that world that could uh, get people uh, more interested and move down that funnel. And one of the best ways to, after you have something created, we have found, and we recently started using ManyChat, that's M-A-N-Y-C-H-A-T, and this is, I'm sure so many of you out there have seen it on uh, Instagram, where comment this word and I will send you this. Something like that. Minichat is owned by Meta, so it's you know verified uh, to to use on Instagram and Facebook. But it is a program that monitors what people type in the comment section, and then you can set up uh, automations without you having to do anything just based on what someone comments. So if you, in in John's example, if you have a you've put together a timeline that you want to help your couples in example timeline create something, put it out there and then say, comment timeline and I'll send you a DM. Comment timeline and I'll hook you up with something. And then that way you can create something once and you can continually push that thing so that maybe people will sign up for it and you can get in their inbox, you'll get in their ecosystem, you'll maybe get on their email list, you know, something like that. Uh, it's, it, it's a really, really powerful tool. And I think the biggest thing that is great about this is it's automation and it's not a lot of extra steps outside of you just continuing to post, right? You don't have to continually have to set something up. You don't have to continually have to do something. It's you create the thing once, you get it going once, and then you tell people, hey, here's this thing, comment this, and you can do it on multiple, multiple posts. I really, really like mini chat and I think that it's John, do you think that for wedding videographers, sorry, I might be going off book a little bit. Do you think that for wedding videographers, wedding vendors, like doing the lead magnet type stuff, you know, doing, uh, getting people on your email list, you know, do they, do you think that a lot of us don't see the value in that? I think it's the like literal number one thing that's undervalued. We think that our work is just going to sell itself, which it will, it will sell your wedding, your wedding films, but the idea of getting them from Instagram to your inbox and on a mailing list, like just like a high yield savings account, it sounds super boring when you talk about it, but it's something that over time is going to like really help you in your business. Think about this. Like if you created um, content aimed at getting people in your inbox and you set up these automations and maybe you create one new helpful product per month, but now like with the with the use of something like mini chat like nick was saying if i created something that was like timeline help and it was like a pdf of building a timeline with a first look and building a timeline without a first look and you had pictures of john bun on it and john bun films logo and like imagery and it's a nice nice pdf or a nice link on a site or whatever it is if i made a video in may that was like all about timeline i could either run ads to get it like people continually seeing that one video or that one post for the next 12 months or every month I could make a new video that I use something like mini chat that automation is already set up. So if somebody types that word timeline in a new video, they're going to get pointed to that same blog post, that same freebie, that same thing. And so these are things that are taking people from your Instagram into your inbox. And why that is so important is because once you have built an inbox, like an email list of people, every time you come out with a new film, you can post it. Every month you can share useful content that are like behind the scenes of what you're doing. And the thing that we talked about being aware uh, in our previous episode, this is the best way to, even if they read the subject line and delete your email, they saw your name And they saw that you had a, like you just showed up and you were front of mind for a millisecond in their brain. Whenever reach on Instagram is somewhere between one and 3% of your users see your content, it's over 98% of people see your email. If you email them, they don't open it about 30 to 40% is like incredible, 
But the point being is just being front of mind, just reminding people. Imagine if all the planners you've worked with are on your email list. Imagine if all your previous couples or everybody, like it doesn't have to just be people that have worked with you. But over time, if you're adding even 30 or 50 new people a month, think about that in a year, two years, you have thousands of people that are getting this information from you and you just never know who is going to share that you exist with their friend because they've been warmed up to you. And maybe they didn't book you, but maybe they downloaded that helpful PDF and maybe they've subscribed to you now and maybe they're seeing your films and then their cousins doing that destination wedding in Italy you always wanted. Or, But it gives you the ability to have communication with them. So implementing something like lead magnets into mini chat is a huge, huge thing to get people from Instagram to your inbox. Nick, before getting on to point number three, I want to remind everybody of something amazing that we have and offer our How to Film Weddings Lux LUT Pack. This was built by Gamut.io. Last year, I had Kaylin go in. We met together several times. We went through my footage and I wanted a luxurious, high-end, bright, beautiful, filmic-looking LUT and he put together what I think is the best LUT on the market. Um, if you head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash LUTs, that's L-U-T-S, you can see before and afters of footage and you can check out that, that package. It's incredible. Um, it saves me so much time. And my favorite part about it, and people have sent me DMs about this, is there is a tool that's included in this. It's called an HSL tool that just rounds off all of the overexposed uh, footage. It takes a little bit of the harshness out of the greens. It just, I literally, I'll put on my LUTs, I'll get my everything ready and I'll drop this tool on top of it. And it takes the footage from good to excellent. It's worth it just for that one little tool. So check those out, howtofilmweddings.com slash LUTs. Nick's, Nick's, Nick, that's your name, Nicholas. What is point number three? Yeah, point number three is going to be to optimize your content. And so all these things the, are so sexy today. They're they all they so really sexy. are. They really are. Uh, optimizing your content. And so y the content that you are putting out there, remember, our goal with having an Instagram account, our goal with having a business is to get clients and have them pay us money. That's the goal. So all of our content should, in some way or fashion, cause lead generation. So how, how do you optimize your content? A great thing that you can do is to look at what is trending and what's being pushed on a platform and then take that content and figure out, is there a way that I can take this silly dance or is there a way that I can take this uh, funny audio or is there a way that I can take this stuff that is being popularly used on Instagram, on TikTok, on whatever platform you're on, and then apply it to my business. So it, it's taking advantage of the trendingness of whatever topic is that you're copying, but also fits in with your niche so that you are continuing to talk to uh, the your your client, the people that you want to work with, right? Um, one thing is, is I'm, I'm thinking about this, so this this thing popped into my mind, John. Remember in the office, whenever uh, Pam they're doing the, uh, the the school you know career day, and Michael makes fun of Pam, and she walks off, and then he turns off and he says, you know, I would never say this, but she's one of the best you know people that's ever worked for me, you know, whatever. And Oscar's like, why wouldn't you tell that to her face? I kind of view calls to action as there are so many people that would love to do the. Th hire us or follow us or, you know, whatever, right? They would love to do that. And they might even talk to, uh, talk about us to other people behind their back. Oh, John is great. He's done this. I saw this, all this stuff, but they're not participating in what you're doing simply because you did not ask them to do something. It's like, does Pam know that Michael really likes her and she does a good job? Maybe, but he doesn't tell it to her, to her face. And so I think the challenge that so many of us need to do is actually ask for the thing that we want. Say, hey, you want a timeline? Comment timeline. You want this? Do this. Instead, we just put content out there because we think it's vain or narcissistic or something like that to ask people for what we want right? Like we, we, I think a lot of people really have that problem. And so create calls to action that are going to engage with people so that they will comment. I, I don't know if that was a stretch 
Or if you could kind of see where my brain was going, pulling those two things together, maybe not. I think this whole episode's a little bit of a stretch. We started with the high yield savings, uh, but you know what? I think that it's good stuff. I agree with you. And any time that we can uh, put an office reference in an episode, I'm going to love it. Uh, so I agree. And if you're listening right now and you have an awesome office reference that you love, you know, maybe put it in the comments or send us a DM. Um, I love the idea of compelling people with calls to action. I think that a lot of us think, oh, Instagram is still the same as it was in 2020 or 2021 or 2022. It is now 2024 and you've got to play the game of the app that you're working with and posting 12 minute films might not be the best thing, but optimizing your content so that it causes lead generation. We've talked about this on the podcast before, but your Instagram is your curb appeal. It's the thing that's going to draw people in and people are used to scrolling through reels now and, uh, you know, fast content and commenting words and getting stuff. And like, this is just the very beginning of getting them to see and what you offer. And so, yeah, telling them, I want you to comment this word, or I want you like, take this next step with me, um, compel them in um, the people aren't going to take that next step if you don't give it to them. And so thinking through these steps, that's the third one. We have lead magnets. We're implementing things like mini chat. We're optimizing the content. And really, we need to move to number four, which is building a conversion funnel. Again, sexy words here. I get it. Um, but like building a conversion funnel um, is going to be what takes your uh, your your clients from finding out that you exist, warming them all the way up into connecting with you. And so creating a funnel is going to be, it sounds maybe, I don't know, it sounds like a lot, but it's really not that much. And it's, you're wanting to begin with like putting together an actual plan. What are you going to do to attract your followers, to nurture them and get them to purchase? And taking a few minutes to saying, okay, I'm going to start with these free things and then I'm going to offer them to join my email list. And on my email list, I'm going to email twice a month and I'm going to continue to build that. I'm going to continue to promote that I do wedding films, but I'm going to warm people up before just trying to book them. And we've said this to so many of our mentor session people and in our mastermind group that people that find you the day that they're reaching out to you are going to be very low paying clientele. And what I mean by that is if somebody's out there that just got engaged and they type in wedding videography, Los Angeles, and they hit send on Google there or whatever, they're gonna find whoever has good SEO, but they're gonna click, look to your site real quick and make a pretty quick decision. They might, can, they might be able to tell by your website that you cost more or things like that. or, But ultimately, they're not going to understand the value that you bring if you immediately have had two minutes with them before they've reached out to you. If you're tired of getting inquiries that are, you know, just say, what are your prices? You need to build a conversion funnel and you need to think, I'm going to infuse this entire brand from beginning to end with these width builder type posts, these depth builder type posts, this this thing called Instagram is a net to catch people and build them into my email inbox so, or into my website or into my funnel so that they can take and go further and take more steps with you. Instead of day one being an ad where it says, book me for your wedding film, you can use this as a handshake with Instagram into a side hug, into an asking for a date, asking for a second date, asking to go steady, saying you love each other, dating longer, getting engaged, then getting married. And that is the best way to get people that are so warmed up to you that will spend 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, whatever that is. And that same system works with finding wedding planners and finding photographers, but it's just a different way of going about it. It's a different, it's networking differently and making connections differently and things like that. And so 
build yourself a conversion funnel. Nick, what do you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I was going to say, if you're, if, if this is something that like, okay, that sounds cool or whatever, but how do I do it? Like go listen to last week's episode where we talk about building awareness, because that's really what this conversion funnel is after, after someone has followed you along and after someone has maybe gotten on your email list, like what do you do with them then? If they sign up for you one time, but you never send out an email and you never, and then you're like, Hey, I'm available. You need a wedding videographer, hire me. Like it's probably not going to happen how you want it to because, you, you know, you're a one and done kind of thing, right? You're, you post something one time and just hope that that one thing you need to consistently show up so that people are reminded um, who you are and do that through both your Instagram and your email campaigns. Um, if you want to take it even a step further, the email campaigns. And that's the, the next thing that I want to talk about is setting up email marketing. And so what this means is you have gotten into uh, their inbox, right? And so you're like, email marketing, what do I need to, what, what is that? Okay, there are a, a couple of uh, great things that you can do. One right now, if, if you've never done this, you've never thought about this, and you want to set up email marketing, I would recommend looking into MailChimp. I know that they have a free account up to a certain number of uh, email subscribers. And so uh, set up something in MailChimp to capture those. If you're using a program like HoneyBook or something like that, you can actually uh, set up Zapier so that whenever people inquire Wire with you, it will automatically send those emails into your email marketing, your email list. So do that, uh, you know, get those names, you know, you can hook that up with mini chats. So whenever they uh, comment timeline, then they have to go to your website and they put in their name and their email to get that PDF download. Are you seeing how we continue to grow this? Anytime you put a blog out there, you know, you, you should have a follow-up action with everything that you do. You should have a compelling call to action. Um, and so if you write a blog, you know, after they finish reading the blog, what are they supposed to do? You put out a piece of content after they watch your 10 second funny reel on Instagram, what are they supposed to do? Maybe it is follow along. Well, then just ask them to follow along. Okay. And then as you start growing that email marketing, uh, you know, the idea here is that you're trying to build trust and rapport with your potential clients so that whenever they get engaged or their friend gets engaged or someone they know or whoever it may be, they will say, oh, I have gotten 10 emails over the last year, once a month or so from Nick and, and, and him and Jen do such a good job. And there's this and this and, and my friends getting, they have to check. So then there's that referral and there's that rapport and they really see you as a guide. Email marketing, I think in our industry is highly underrated because we're not selling something in a traditional sense, like people are like, oh, here's a clothing brand and they're always coming out with a new, new clothes and like that kind of stuff. We're, we're videographers. But if you do this right and you warm people up ahead of time and they know who you are, it can really, really do positive things for your business. I will use a real world example of what I'm doing with John Bunn Films is I'm using Flowdesk, which you pay for, but what I've done is I've connected all of my previous clients in there, as well as all of my warm vendor leads that I have, and they're separated into two different boxes or two different bins. And I have, for the most part, the emails that I send out are about once a month, and they're just an update of what's going on. There's a few behind the scenes photos of me at whatever my recent wedding was, or links to some of my most recent films. But in my mind, especially with my warm vendor market, I just want them to have a touch point with me once a month where they remember that I exist. I stay front of mind. And so I'm using Instagram to network with people like we've talked about in the previous episode. And if they want, they can join my, I can add them to my email list um, and put them, put my information in front of them every month. And my goal is to be like the other day I was, uh, in a local Facebook group and somebody posted, I'm looking for a wedding DJ. Who do you recommend? And it was interesting because I have two people in Tulsa that I recommend. And one of them I had just recently seen at the Tulsa zoo because he was, the DJ for the event. And I was like, Hey, how's it going? It's so good to see you. And I've just, he has stayed in front of mind for years and years and become a friend. 
and and I was like, oh yeah, his company is this. And I, I immediately typed that in and I was like, okay, the other guy, his name is this, what's the name of his company? And I was like, ah, I can't remember the name of his stinking company. I haven't done a wedding with him in so long. What was the name of his company? I went to his Facebook and his name's not on his Facebook. And I was just like, this is too much work. I'm just going to refer the one DJ. So I commented the name of the one DJ and the girl was like, Hey, thanks so much. And that was like a very real representation, um, for me of what it is like to just stay front of mind. The dude was at the zoo doing an event, probably making a thousand bucks on a Saturday morning when I was running a 5k with my daughter, but I saw him and it just kept me front of mind with him. And I was like, Oh, that that's who I'm going to refer. And maybe he books that wedding. Maybe he doesn't. But my goal with my email marketing or with anything that I'm doing, social media showing up in my stories is just staying in front of people to be for them to be aware that I exist. And so in recapping to go from Instagram to inbox, you really do need to put together a strategy and a plan to first of all, realize who we are aiming for and what is our goal, then build lead magnets that attract them, implement things like mini chat, optimize your content, build that funnel, and then really lean into your inbox, that email marketing, and you can really convert much, much higher with email inbox marketing than try to book me for your wedding on Instagram. You're going to get more people that are more warm to you. You're going to get more vendors that are more warm to you. And this is the long game that, that is worth investing in. It's like a high yield savings account. It just the slow, steady, boring thing that you're doing. And over time you look back and you're like, wow, I'm happy that I, I started that account. Cause if you didn't start that account, it never can grow. And so maybe you can like, you, th you think, oh, I need tens of thousands of email subscribers in my inbox, like in my flow desk or mini chat or whatever email. So, there you go. MailChimp. Like maybe I need 10,000 people to be successful. No, you could have 40 or 50 people that you're staying in touch with. And that's enough. Like there's a lot, a lot that people are missing out on. Like this is the big thing I've been pushing lately for our mastermind or it's like build those funnels, create nets, get people into your inbox, then serve that email list. And over time, you're go the good things are going to happen and you can convert them um, when the time is right. And so if you want to go from Instagram to inbox, you have to have that plan in mind. Yep. Uh, and that's, that's really the whole thing that we've been talking about with this. Uh, Instagram is the best is just having a plan and having a strategy. And, and I think that if you have a good plan in, in place, uh, you can get them from your Instagram to your inbox and their inbox and continue to nurture that relationship so that they will reach out to you. John, it has been uh, nice hanging out with you and talking with you about this. I want to say a special thanks to Wedding Post House and Bride and Groom Video for uh, presenting this episode, for sponsoring this episode. Again, I want to remind you about our 10 prompts to help you grow your Instagram account. You can download that over at howtofilmweddings.com slash Instagram. And uh, yeah, that all that hopefully if you implement some of those things, it will help you reach more people and grow your account there. John, as always, it has been a pleasure to hang out with you listeners. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, we will see ya. See ya.